I'll be the first to admit that it might seem a little strange or weird or maybe even selfish to grieve the loss of someone you've never even known. But the grief and the loss are real, and the knowing comes from a wonderful woman with a passion for sharing. Some of you might know Amy Krauss Rosenthal. You may have read some of her books. Or maybe you don't know Amy at all. Maybe you have your own Amy. About maybe a month ago, a little less than a month ago, Amy passed away. And this isn't a eulogy for her. I don't, I don't have the position or the authority or the time, actually, to do her justice. But what I do hope uh, in sharing a little bit about her is that the magic of her maker spirit will live on in all of us. When I read her book, The Encyclopedia of an Ordinary Life, I felt like I'd spent the afternoon with a really good friend. I, I mean, I laughed, I cried, I just, I, I loved it. And it was at that point on that I decided that Amy and I would collaborate on a project together. She, she didn't know that, but I decided that that's what we were going to do. And I wasn't sure what the project was, and I didn't even care. I just wanted to work with her because I was so inspired by her passion and her vision, and I wanted to be a part of that. So this, this talk here, is it's not the collaboration that I had in mind, but it's with heartfelt appreciation for her generous spirit that I'd like to share three pearls of Amy-inspired wisdom with you. Number one, find the thing you can't not do. Amy was a maker. Among other things, she made short films, she made salads, she made wishes and books. She was a writer, and if people asked her, you know, why do you write? She would say, because I can't not. What's that thing that you can't not do? What's that thing that bubbles up above everything else? For me, it's that I can't not create, whether it be art or photographs, blog posts, and the slides beside me. I can't not create. I create, I recreate, I create some more. Take a second right now and turn to the person next to you. Share with them what that thing is that you can't not do. Now, while there's a lot of talking going on, some of you may not yet have figured out what your can't not is, and that's okay. You can can't not stop talking now. <laughs> All right, point number two, stand under your umbrella. Amy sent a message out that on the 8th of the 8th, 2008, at 8.08 p.m., she would be standing under the bean in Chicago. And anyone who wanted to join her uh, to make something was welcome to show up. She would be the one with the yellow umbrella. And then it is through that that the association between Amy and a yellow umbrella was born. Imagine for a second if you had a yellow umbrella hanging in your school, maybe in your classroom, your faculty room, a shared workspace, or your library. When you walk past that umbrella, when you saw that umbrella, it would remind you that in that school and in that space, we take risks. It would remind you that we make and we create. And it would remind you to amplify the ideas of your colleagues. We have blue skies thinking. Why not some yellow umbrella living? What would happen if you had a yellow umbrella hanging in your school? How would that amplify some of the ideas if you were to stand under that yellow umbrella? 
The last point I'm going to talk about is more. More is a word that I associate really strongly with Amy. She had it tattooed on her arm. It's in the title of one of her books. And Amy believed that the more you looked for something, the more you would find it. Uh, she, her biggest more was that she would bring more joy and more connection to people through her work. Like most of us, I'm pretty busy. I've got you know, a family, a job, I'm a student, and I've got a lot going on, a pretty full schedule. And the idea of adding more to that is <laughs> kind of crazy and almost impossible. But then if I think about it for a second, what if I were to take away something, do less of something, so that I could do more of something else? How about less structure and more freedom? Less talking and more listening. Less work and more play. How would doing less make room for more? This here is my new umbrella. I bought it about a week or so after Amy passed away because I wanted something tangible to hold on to to remind me of this amazing maker. Amy was a huge inspiration to me. She reminded me to make. You know, when I was confused, I should make something. When I wasn't sure what to do next, make something. Uh, when in doubt, make something. You know, make, make good art, make connections, make a difference. To be a maker was Amy's passion. You could almost say that it was her destiny. Who's your Amy? Who's that person for you that inspires you and encourages you to make the most of your time here. And when you find that person, what magic will evolve from the maker in you? 